Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to look into soil formation. If we look at this picture right here, we can see there's a number of different things in it. We have some leaves, some grass right here, and then also what appears to be some sediments. The end result of weathering and biologic activity is soil. So when we saw the leaves and the grass, that's all biologic material, or those plants could have been doing something to the soil. And we also saw sediments, and we know that sediments are the end result of weathering. So we combine them, we get soil. Soil formation, so we start with the breakdown of rock in an area, or generally bedrock. And what will happen is either through chemical or physical weathering processes will break down, and we can see that right here. As it breaks down, the sediments pile up. So we can see here, there's a pile up of sediments. And ultimately what's gonna happen is that as these sediments gonna pile up, we have organic material also up on top or plants growing. As the plants grow and possibly die, they'll contribute more organic material to the top. The organic in this situation here is once living uh, organisms or material. We have a number of different soil horizons or soil layers. We have the O up on top, which is our organic layer containing all of our plants right here. Then we have A, our topsoil. And you can see that as we go down, the colors change a little bit. So this region right here is our topsoil from here to here. Rotting plants, organic and finely weathered rock. We have a B horizon. And you can see here, it's mostly the same color. Little organic material, right? We're farther away from it. Partially weathered rock in this region. As we get to the C, or the regolith, we can see that it's some bedrock broken down into bigger pieces, and then finally a D horizon, which is bedrock right here. Sometimes you'll have all these layers, sometimes none. It depends on the area, but in a typical region where we have the breakdown of bedrock and with given enough time and little disturbance, we'll get the sediments to pile up with organic material up on top. Here, this person made a cross section these and marked the different horizons. So you can see here with these little T's, they marked the number of different soil layers that we have in here. Okay, as we get to the top, so we had have our organic layer right here, A for topsoil, B, C, and I think the D is way down here. There are probably a couple layers off, but there's definitely distinguished differences between these. Soil types. There are two major types of soil. We have transported and residual, and pretty much the names give their, uh, what to their soil type away. Transported soils are soils that have been carried by wind or water from location of the parent rocks. That means it weathered, broke down, and then something moved it. Most of the New York soils is actually transported soil that was brought by glaciers. Once again, trucks coming in, backfilling into areas, transported soils. They're not from where it originally broke down. Then we have residual soils. This is where bedrock is broken down, the sediments pile up on top, and they stay there. So when we see in residual soils, it actually has the same composition to the bedrock below or the parent rock from which that material broke down or weathered. This is just a map of the different soils around the United States. And we're gonna go into something similar like this in class. I hope you enjoyed it. That's it for weathering. Take care.